Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. My name is Sanji and in this video, I'm gonna go through my experience of using the car sharing service called GoGet. Now, a few of you may know, I've been living in Melbourne for the last three years and in those three years, I've actually never owned a car. So for me to get around, I've been using public transport, car sharing and ride sharing services. Ride sharing being things like Uber, Didi, Ola, car sharing being things like GoGet. Now I thought if I've done this for three years, I'm probably in a pretty good place to give you guys a bit of insight into my experience and share that with you. I'm gonna run through what GoGet is overall, how it works, like the whole process of signing up and actually getting a car and then using that car. I'm also gonna run through the costs associated with it and I'll run through my experience of using it, the things I like, the things I don't like, and some tips if you are thinking of signing up. As always, I have included timestamps along the bottom and also along the little seek bar where you can cut across and jump across into any specific section if you want to. So GoGet is an Australian company that basically has gone out and bought a whole bunch of cars that you can then rent out on an hour or daily basis. Now they're based mainly on the East Coast in Brisbane, Sydney, Newcastle, Canberra, Melbourne and Adelaide. I can tell in this picture that I've included, I forgot to include Tasmania. They are part of Australia, but they're not in the GoGet network. Now in terms of how it works, it's literally this process that they have. Join, book, swipe, go. I'll go into a bit more detail, but basically you join, you get given this little card, which is like a normal bank card, which you can use. You then go onto their phone app, you book a car using it. I'll show you that as well. You drive your car around, and then once you're finished with it, you put your car back where you found it, you lock it with this, and then you're done. That's broadly the process. I'll go through it. There's a few nuances, okay? It's not as easy as it sounds. There's a few other things you gotta do. In terms of costs, they've got a few different options. I use the one on the far right, the $49 a year option, but you can go with monthly options, there's a student option, and then there's a business option. I use the yearly one because I'm a very infrequent user of GoGet. I really just have it in case I need to use it to do the odd job here or there. That being said, I have spent, or I've checked, I usually spend between four and five hundred dollars a year using it. So it's actually, it is a decent amount of money that I am using, but it's usually what I have is, I'll have months of not using it, and then I'll have a couple of months where I might use it a lot. So I'll run through a bit more detail of that, but these are the different options. If you're starting out, I'd say go with the $49 a year option. It's a one-off payment and that's literally all you have to pay. If you don't use a car at all, you just have to pay $49 a year for the opportunity to use a car if you had to. Now you can see on here, there is a breakdown of the cost of how it's done. And it's usually broken up into two different ways that you will be charged. You can be charged either a hourly rate combined with a distance traveled rate, or you'll be charged a fixed daily rate where you'll be able to travel up to 150 kilometers and they won't charge you any extra for that. If you go over 150 kilometers, then they will charge you extra for that. But you can see that's the different breakdown. Now, if you go with the more monthly, go get casual, go get frequent, you do pay less per hour, but you always do pay that 40 cents a kilometer distance fee. Now the cars they have are quite varied. So they have Yaris's, Corollas, SUVs, which are really just RAV4s, uh, vans, the Toyota Hi-Ace van, I've used that a couple of times. And convertibles, I have not seen a convertible on the GoGet network in the areas that I live. So they might be more available in Sydney, but I've never seen a convertible in Melbourne. It's always the other cars. And I usually use the ones that I've marked out there in red, the small hatchbacks, the medium hatchbacks, and the vans. And again, you can see how the prices vary. So the smaller the car, the cheaper the cost, obviously, both in terms of the daily rate and the hourly rate. So if you are thinking of signing up, the first thing I would do is have a look at the GoGet network to get an idea of where all the cars are actually located to see are they in areas that you actually live in or operate in. So this screenshot that I've thrown up is of the Melbourne area and each dot represents both the orange and the gray represent where a GoGet is currently located. They call them GoGet pods, which are basically either a car parking spot or a location in a car park 
where it's being marked out specifically for a go-get and that's where your go-get car lives. You can see here, I live in the Mooney Ponds Ascot Vale area up there in the top left. There are a few cars nearby. For me, the reality is the nearest car is actually about 10 to 15 minutes away, walking distance. Now, I used to live closer in the middle of the city and also in the St Kilda area. In those times, there was always a car within like a five minute walk. So it's a bit more convenient. And you can see there where the Melbourne CBD is, there's a lot of dots. And it's true, if you walk around the city, and you look for those go-get cars, which are usually silver or blue or white, and will have like an orange mirror on the side, you'll start to see them everywhere. They are usually located everywhere, but they're mainly based for being in the city. When you do see a car out in the suburbs, they're usually quite close to a train station or some kind of public transport area. So let me now run through the process of actually booking and using a car in terms of my experience. So I'll assume you've already signed up and you've gotten this little card in the mail. So once you fire up the app, it'll show you immediately a list of all the cars available in your area. So I've sort of pretended I live in this Carlton North, Fitzroy North area, a little bit north of that. And you can see these are all the cars available. So there's a Serato, a RAV4, a Yaris, all of that. Now when a box is green, what it's saying is this is now available to be booked. So you can scroll across to the right. You can see all these cars in this Brunswick East area are all available to be booked. So let's say I wanted to get this Serato and I wanted to get it for 12 o'clock. I grab it there. I click, I want it for 12 o'clock all the way through to the minimum booking is only one hour. So say you just went for one hour, you can book that or say you wanted it for two hours from 12 o'clock till 2 p.m. today, two hours. So it's going to cost me $27.30 just in terms of the hourly fee, plus there'll be a distance component, which is 40 cents per kilometer traveled. So they can't charge you that obviously because they don't know how far you're going to drive. So what they'll do is if you hit book now, which I'm not going to do because I don't want to actually book it, it will then actually take $27.30 out of my bank account immediately. That's how they secure the car. Then they will wait till you've actually finished your trip and then they'll send you a bill at the end of the month to say, okay, this is how many kilometers you traveled. You need to pay this as well. So that's how they split the payment for both the hours and the distance. You pay the hours up front and you pay the distance at the end of the month. That's all tallied up. Now that's the booking process. Now, if you wanted to book it for a whole day, all you do is you book it all the way up till you get up to in a past 24 hours and then it will actually just hold steady at the one number. So let me just quickly, quickly do this. Okay, so you can see there, after I went over 12 hours, it's now $109 and it's not moving. And what it's saying there, you can see, charge today is gonna to be $109, that's my fixed fee, and it's going to give me 150 kilometers of distance travel. So that's as much as I'm gonna spend, is $109. I've generally found if you're gonna book a car for more than two or three hours, it's almost worth bulking it for the whole day and then you can just get that distance traveled uh, covered as part of your booking and you're not under the pressure to m get the car back in time because that can be a bit of a thing and I'll talk about that a bit later but that's how you can book out a car for more than a few hours. I always go about 10 minutes early to get to the car. Now there's a reason for this is it all comes down to damage and checking the condition of the car. If it's a car, especially if it's a car you haven't used before, you want to make sure you've taken note of all the damage because you don't want to get blamed for any of the damage. So nowadays the app's actually been quite updated where you basically go in, click on the booking section and then you click report damage. And what you do is you go and you take pictures of all the damage that you can see around the car. So on the front, on the corners, any you know scrapes, broken lights, whatever it is, you take pictures of it and you submit it through the system. And you have a little a little token thing where it says, can you confirm if this was before, during or after your booking, I think it is. And you just say, this is before my booking, this is all the damage I've seen. You take a picture and you leave that there and you submit it. Once you've got that, then you can go in and you unlock the car with on the front windscreen. It unlocks the car, you go inside and the key is always in the car. So the rule that they always say, or the, the thing they recommend is always leave the keys in the car and use this to lock and unlock the car. And then you do all your usual stuff. You get in the car, check the seats, make sure that it's all lifted up to the right height or down to whatever height you need it. 
check your mirrors and then turn on the car and you go. And it's just a normal car after that. The cars do have a little toll booth thing. So if you do go through a toll road, you can, you'll just get charged for it. And that will again, I think, get sent as part of the bill at the end of the month. There's no special parking privileges with the car. So you do, if you do go somewhere where you have to pay for parking, you just have to pay for parking as you would normally. You don't get a free park just because it's a go-get car. And then once you're done, you just bring it back to where you found it. So this is the key thing is you can't drop it off at another go-get spot. Each go-get car lives in a specific spot. So once you've finished using it, you have to bring it back to where it was before. Have a quick look around, make sure there's no new damage or anything like that. Leave the keys inside and then lock the car and then you walk away and you're done. And that's it. And then at the end of the month, you'll get sent the bill for the kilometers and the toll roads that you might have used. Now that we've said that, let me go through a few nuances and experiences that I've had. One time I used to go get and when I got to the car, I had taken note of all the damage I went to turn on the engine and the engine didn't start. It had a dead battery. So I called GoGet and I said, this is the situation. They said, sorry, we can't do anything about that car right now. And what they said was, you need to now go and find another car. And the ne next car was like 10 minutes away. We'll transfer your booking to that next car and we'll give you like an extra half an hour as bonus. So that was a bit of an inconvenience. I wasn't in a big rush, so it didn't, it worked out okay for me. But in that moment, I imagine if you were in a rush, you'd probably then just say, look, cancel the whole booking. I'm just going to take an Uber. Now, for me, the Uber was going to be like three times the cost of just taking a go-get. So I still stuck with taking the go-get and I had time. But that's just something to be wary of. The other thing is, and I mentioned this before, is sometimes people have not left enough petrol in the car. And that can be a problem because you only have booked the car maybe, say, for one hour and you've got like a 45-minute appointment. So you got to be careful. You don't want to be spending you know, 10, 15 minutes putting petrol in the car because the other person didn't do it. So the rule is to always have at least a quarter tank in the car before you finish. So just make sure you take time out to note that. Now let's talk about crashes. I've never crashed a go-get. So I can't talk about this with a high level of certainty and no one's ever crashed into me. They do have on the website an option to have a limited liability. Now I'll show you what it looks like on here. You can have standard liability or reduced liability. Now, if you have standard liability, I believe that means if you're in a car crash and it's your fault, you probably have to pay $2,000 as liability. But if you have reduced liability, you're in a car crash and it's your fault, you probably have to pay $300 of liability. I imagine if you're in a car crash and it's not your fault, you shouldn't have to pay anything. But again, read the terms and conditions, make sure you understand that. The team is pretty good. You can give them a call and clarify it all. But again, like I said, I've never been in the situation where I've had a car crash, so I can't really talk about this. But I do run with the reduced liability option just in case something happens. I'd rather be paying $300 than $2,000. Now, another thing I've noticed is if you book the car on like an hourly rate, you always feel like you're running out of time. And this is something I've experienced is, for example, if you want to book the car to go to see a dentist and you've budgeted about 20 minutes at the dentist, and it's about 20 minutes to get there and 20 minutes to get back. That's about a one hour, right? Now, if you get to your dentist and for whatever reason your dentist is running late, suddenly that has a big impact on you because you can't get your car back in time. Now, if that's the case, you can extend your booking in the middle of the booking. So you can extend your booking by an extra half an hour or an extra an hour, and they don't really punish you for that. It's just the normal amount they'll just add on, like an extra $6 or whatever it is. So you can do that, but if the car has been booked by someone immediately after you, then you can't extend the booking. Then you're screwed. <laughs> Again, I can't say I've been in this situation, but I have heard from a friend where he said he had a go-get and he booked it for a certain time. He went to go and pick it up, but the car was not there. The person who had booked it before him was still using it. Now that would have probably impacted the other person in terms of giving them a fine. It impacted my friend because he then had to travel another 10 minutes to go and find another car to then use and they tried to give him a discount and all of that. But that's something to be conscious of. Now I'm just gonna say at least once a year, I actually do though have the thought of, hey, should I buy a car? Because I think, should I really keep spending money on go gets public transport and Ubers when I could just buy a car? And I recently had this thought again, at the you know around December of 
2020 and I thought, oh, could I just buy a really cheap car and do it? I'll do that in a future video, but it's an interesting thought. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment below. Or like I said, you can join me on Twitter or Instagram or even on TikTok and leave a question there. I am trying to be more active on those platforms. And if you're interested in any of my other videos around books that I'm interested in where it comes to personal finance investing or some of my videos around ETFs and investing in the share market, make sure you check them out there. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.